Astronomy is a science and you cannot separate any science from the process through which we learn it. If you try to separate it, it's a recipe for failure because then it comes across to students as a bunch of facts and why should they believe you if you're saying something different than their high school teacher did or their pastor did or anything else. If you want them to accept what you're talking about in science, you have to show them how that process works, how we gather the evidence, how we interpret the evidence, how we make a model to explain the evidence, and how we test that model and decide whether it's valid or not. So that is integrated for us in everything we do. We don't have a process of science thing that we pull out of the chapter because that would be making it seem like it wasn't part of everything. It's integrated throughout. Every single learning goal that we have is phrased as a question. Questions are something you answer by looking at the evidence and putting it together. The process of science is integrated in everything we do throughout the book, throughout the mastery in astronomy, and of course sometimes we have questions that try to dig at the particular process a little bit more deeply, but we hope that the students are seeing it at all times. The students who are coming into courses like this are the non-science students and it generally just goes along with not being a science oriented student that most of these students are also, they don't consider themselves to be math oriented either and they may have had poor experiences with math as well. In fact, as you know I also write a mathematics textbook and that's because it's the same students who need this extra math work that need this extra science work. Now the question then becomes what do you do in your science course? Now I had the luxury of teaching both the math and the science so I and I had the same students in both classes by and large so I could spend all my time teaching them the math in the one course and then know they had it coming to the science course. If you've just got them in science in astronomy you have to make a decision about how much math you're going to cover with them. And the truth is, you can understand all of these concepts in astronomy without doing any math at all if you teach it well. But if you add the math, you can understand it even better. So what we've done is we've put the math into boxes that go along with the textbook so that those students and professors who want to get that extra depth from the math can those who decide not to can skip over those and do it without the math. Now recognizing that one of the difficulties is sometimes the students have forgotten some of the basic skills that they learned in the past, we've now created a set of basic skills math tutorials with little videos that show how these skills work, things like fractions, powers of 10, scientific notation. And we're hoping that the more we make things like this available to students, the more they will on their own decide, hey, this really isn't that scary. I can learn this. I'm capable. And they will therefore get an even deeper understanding not only of astronomy, but also they'll no longer be so afraid of the math and will be able to use it to help their lives in other ways. I like to think that what our textbook does differently, of course there are some content things that we do differently. We do comparative planetology. We do galaxy evolution rather than just talking about individual galaxies one at a time. But those things are feeding into that larger goal of helping the students get a cosmic perspective. Remember our main goal is to change the students perspective on their place in the universe. So I like to think that what we've done better is to make sure that we're always staying focused on that goal and that we're doing it at a level that is right for the students. One of the things that I've noticed about the books that I used in the past was they were always very clear to me, but I already knew the subject matter. And my students were saying, I don't get it. So we've tried to make sure that we're writing it in a way that will be clear to students. And I do think from some of the comments we've gotten from students, I like to think that we've been successful. We get students saying, yes, when we look at your book and other books, we understand it the way you've written it better. Whereas professors may not always notice that difference because to them, it's the same content. And since they already know it, either way is going to look good to them.